In today's world where everyone strives to fend for themselves, young people are rising in support of the community through service. Enoka Odongo has more. Enoka, karibu sana. Asante sana. So give us a background of who you are. Thank you, Nyangweso. Uh, my name is Enoka Odongo. Mm -hmm. I am a co-founder of Grace's Mission, a community-based organization. Uh, these organizations operate in Moroni sub-county and Kisumu sub-county. I also have a background in environmental conservation and natural resource management. I hold a degree on the same from the University of Nairobi. Okay. Apart from that, I also support other young organizations and other young groups in organization development and entrepreneurship support. Good. So what inspires, this is the, mostly about service to the community, yeah? So what inspires your motivation to serve the community? Thank you. Uh, when I was growing up, I completely grew up, up in the rural setup from the community. So when I was in, uh, interacting with the community from my school uh, uh, life, people would ask me, you go to school and then come back and support the community. Mm -hmm. So throughout when, in my education, I was thinking, how then can I come back and support my community? So this is one thing that also inspired me. And also in my community setup, I look at myself as one of the elites, someone who have gone an extra mile to get some knowledge. So what am I going to do this knowledge, to use this knowledge for, if not support my community? Nice. I love you've used the word elite, yeah? And uh, most of uh, young people that have completed their studies, maybe in the university, and they've decided to either advance or do something for themselves, they do it to profit themselves. They do it to, you know, benefit themselves and maybe their family. They do not think beyond themselves but you've decided to go into service to the community what is the significance of this um what i am doing is something like giving back to the community the mm -hmm. community has supported me and i remember during one of the my times at the university uh, the community came together and find rest towards my school fee so mm -hmm. how then can i give back how then can i say thank you to the community so this is one of the ways that i'm actually doing to say to give my hands back in, a, in appreciation to my community. Good. Of, of course, there are young people, many of young people, they would want to stay in, 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 in towns to fend for themselves, but I'm of a different opinion, that we really need to get back to the community because that's also where we have a lot of opportunities and we need to get back there and support our people. Okay. And, uh Tell us about uh, Gracia's Mission CBO. You said you're the co-founder. So what is Gracia's Mission and uh, what do you do there? Uh, Gracia's Mission is a community-based organization and it was supported, it was founded by youths, young people who were within the community. So we came together and realized that how then can we support the community? Because when I was working alone, I could not do it better. But when we could come together as a community, as young people who would also consider themselves as elite, we thought that we need to be gracious to our people. That's where we got the name Gracious Mission. So uh, the organization uh, has four thematic areas, and these thematic areas were realized after we done a research, a thorough research within the community, and realized these are speak to the needs of our people. So we look at agribusiness because um, my livelihood of many people relies on, on agriculture in the community. Uh, number two, we're actually looking at the uh, uh, climate action and um, environmental conservation because in today's world, climate uh, change impacts a lot. In, it cuts across various sectors, energy, health, and even the agriculture is also impacted. And then we look at the entrepreneurship because we need people to also venture into this. Uh, and we believe that young people and women, once they can be supported and went into entrepreneurship, then their life can change. And finally, our third, uh, fourth thematic areas is in research and advocacy, because we believe in data and we need data technology. So we need to use data, a data-driven uh, 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 program to support all these programs across. Okay. Thank you. So you've, you've mentioned a few concepts that uh, I'm keen for us to discuss. 
the youth empowerment, climate change, uh, data involvement in such things. These are concepts that uh, in layman's language, the elderly or the community in the rural areas do not fully understand. They understand that maisha imepanda, they understand that, uh, you know, the way of living is, the cost of living has really increased climate change, either it's too hot or too heavy floods, you know, flooding and everything. How do you package such messages for them to understand the impact of them, you know, doing something different, beh behavior change? Uh, I thank you. I know that's very true. Mm. And uh, of course, those who are part of the organization would understand it. But uh, through this, that's why we sometimes organize what is called farmers field school. So when we get into farmers field schools, we uh, gather and mobilize farmers to come together and through this we have to take them through the training. So if we have to do that, of course we have to use the less man's language that they will understand. Mm -hmm. Because they won't understand climate change, they won't understand the data, but if you tell them what's happening, which they are also seeing, because if you look at the impact uh, uh, generally, uh, uh, the evolution in agriculture, we used to have abundant harvest before. But this has been changing, reducing after every year. The uh, temperature actually been rising. So they understand this very well. So this is the point in which we are actually using for them to understand what we're doing in the community. Okay. And uh, what about entrepreneurship? Which areas of entrepreneurship do you focus on? Uh, entrepreneurship is wide. Mm -hmm. So there's actually business entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. A business, you just get involved in the business. But entrepreneurship, you have to look at what gaps there is in the community that I can venture into. So this is what we've been doing and primarily been conducting entrepreneurial training for youths and young people uh, and also women. So through this, of course, we support them through business management, which we take them uh, through the trainings. And we also ask them to identify gaps which are there in the community. Because the only way you're going to bridge the gaps is by... Uh, uh, providing a solution. So we ask them to look at it in the business perspective, because you're not going to talk to someone, but at the end of the day, even these young people want to make money out of this. So how can you make money by providing a solution to a problem which you read in the community? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what change have you seen since <clears throat> you started the work that you're doing? Um, <clears throat> I would say we've been impressed by the change, the uh, response that actually been shown by young people, because mm -hmm. Uh, in, one, in our trainings, we develop what is called actionable points or action plans. So we need young people. At the end of the day, we need just to see that our training that we do impacts. We, not just, we don't always just do training for the sake of training people, but we want this to impact. So we, in most of our trainings, what we do is we ask young people to set their action point, to set their timelines, what they want to see achieve at the end of the day. Nice. On uh, climate change, you've, you've, told, you've said that uh, you go to the communities and explain to them these things that they are seeing happen, why they are happening and what can be done. So in your organization, the Gracious Missions, what action plans do you have to help alleviate such? Uh, thank you. Uh, climate Smart Agriculture is one of our key points that we take, into, we take very seriously. Because we cannot ask young people to just to venture into agriculture. Because you see how agriculture is much impacted by climate change. And when I talk about agriculture being impacted by climate change, we have drought, a prolonged drought, of course. We have floods that comes. We have uh, insect uh, pest, pest infestations. And we also have other diseases. So for us to, or for young people to really get through this, they need to make it climate smart. It's. Uh, introduce technologies or adopt those ways that would make whatever they're doing resilience to the impact of climate change. And this one is one of them is uh, a venturing to poultry, for example. Poultry is not affected by uh, climate change, it's not affected by prolonged drought, it's not affected by flood either. Yeah. So we're also asking young people to venture into uh, other technologies just as beekeeping. Uh, they're also not affected by uh, climate change. Yeah. So, and also, we also have other technologies. We have uh, other, you know, use of uh, local available materials, such as we have bags, uh, cement bags, uh, we have local containers. So these ones, we're actually uh, supporting them to create some 
kind of garden. So these gardens you can actually have your, you know, daily vegetables out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Speaking, seeing that uh, how technology has improved and uh, different things, different ways in which farmers are making, uh, you know, improvement on their farms, you know, using different types of uh, agricultural products, fertilizers, and some of them affect the climate in a different way. So how do you go about mobilizing the use of, you know, favorable products for the, for the crops? Uh, thank you. Um... Uh, one of the things that we've been doing is uh, uh, we're actually currently in the process of setting up a demo farm that's going to train young people on the use of some of these alternatives because uh, of course uh, in the conventional way of doing agriculture people use fertilizer, people use the pesticides but we're actually just trying to engage young people in the use of what's called agroecological agro technologies. Uh, we have uh, 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 like a formulation of locally available organic pesticides that can be applied to these crops. Uh, we have organic fertilizer that are also already in the, in, the, in, the, in the market today. But young people also need to create their own so that they need to cut that cost because in the rural setup where agriculture takes place, there's already uh, 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 farmyard manure, among other technologies that actually are available within the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love how you're speaking a lot about farmers. Are you a farmer yourself? Yeah, I am. I uh -huh. am a farmer. Uh -huh. uh, I do arrow roots. I also do African leaf vegetables and a bit of uh, poultry. Improve Okay. Yeah. Why did you decide arrow roots and uh, the different types? I just as I have told you, we're looking at the gaps in the community. <laughs> Where can we enter as an entrepreneur? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we actually have a very big, huge market in, in, in arrow root. And also, as I've told you, poultry is not affected by climate change. So, and then it also has a huge market. Because in Kisumu town, for example, a lot of poultry or chicken that is being eaten in hotels does not come from Kisumu County. So Kisumu as a county has still been described as a consumer market. We're not producing our own food that feeds us, but we rely on other counties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's actually why I decided to venture into those. Okay. And also, I've told you about the African leaf vegetables. It was a huge market, and it's also very nutritious. Mm -hmm. Today, if you have to sample people, maybe 10 people, uh, almost half will tell you that they don't want to eat kale or skumawiki. They prefer kenyeji, African leaf vegetables. So it has a huge market, and also uh, be resilient to climate change. It's not affected by, it's adversely affected by climate change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we find a huge opportunity within those setups. And uh, how do you mobilize this message? How do you reach out to the community? What strategies do you use as an organization? As an organization, we're actually situated within the community and our office is also within the community. Uh, our members who are youth are part of the community. So once we have this message and each one of these are members, we currently have uh, around 50 members who are youth uh, within our organizations. And these youth are also part of the community. So once we have this message, they spread it out to other young people and as well as other farmers. Today, we continue to receive flock of farmers who come to consult with us in, 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 in our offices. Which venture do, can, they venture, can, can, can they engage in? Which crops can they grow? Which uh, you know, uh, uh, technologies can they apply in, 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 in their crops? For example, their crops are affected by various diseases, various pests. They actually at different stages, they don't know which kind of, for example, fertilizer to use. Should they use urea? Should they use sulfate? Should they use JP? Mm -hmm. So we give them this. So our office today acts as a resource center for farmers in the community. Wow. Yeah. And how has the community or society at large adapted your idea? Actually, um, in various uh, farmers' field schools that we organize, they're actually very happy. And we've got a lot of people coming and telling us, we love what you're doing, please continue. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and just to mention, in one of our field schools, uh, we interacted with one of the head teachers of primary schools. So this uh, uh, principal head teacher said, no, you know, I am so old, I cannot get this information. So please give us this information. We love it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're talking constantly about farmers' field school. 
how do you what is it what is it you know and how do you go about it uh, a farmer's field school just as it said it's school uh -huh. so school people learn in school oh. so farmers come to schools but we create it in the field so we go to where farmers are so we go to for example identify a farm and then we mobilize farmers to station at that particular area so through that we we, we go with our team and then we train them about different technologies mm -hmm. and also farmers also used to get to interact with us and we what we do we also do collaboration with the government and our partners so through this farmers also get to engage with government one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. so it's actually been a beautiful interaction and I would say community really love that approach that you're using. And I can see that you've come a long way. How has that journey been since you started your CBO? Uh, it's not been easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, it has a number of challenges. Uh, when we actually started the CBO, um, uh, you know, you want to start, but how are you going to make it? How are you going to make people believe that you're doing something that can support their programs? So. It's not been easy, but we've tried to use, for example, my past experience in organization development, which I accrued working previously with a similar organization. And through that, we got engaged with few farmers who, of course, through that engagement with few farmers, spread this information to other farmers and other youths who have now come to embrace what you're doing. Mm. Yeah. You've, you've said something very catchy. You have the idea, but you don't know where to start or how to start. So what, what, what characteristics must I have in order to start something and, you know, have it reach the level at yours? Ah, has? thank you. You know, when you have a dream, you have something that you want to do. But then at the end of the day, you want to see these things achieved at the end of the day. Of course, you have to, you'll pass through a lot of obstacles, a lot of challenges. So you must be very persistent and you must be persuasive so that you get these communities to believe, people to believe what you want to do. So you must be persistent, you must be persuasive, you must be a good negotiator. And you, of course, you need to be a good mobilizer as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking of obstacles, what have you? Uh, what kind of obstacles have you personally experienced d during your journey, and how did you manage? Um, I transitioned from one organization to another because I believe that I personally, I had something that I want to do to the community, something that I want to use to transform the community. So when I transitioned from the one organization, I, the, where I was before, I believe that there's something that we needed to push through the community that I did not have the power to push through. So that's why I gathered other few friends and then we started this organization. Yeah. But from that point, how then did we, would we get out of uh, you know, one point to another? So it was not very easy but we had to endure and we get into the next level. Mm -hmm. Many young people start something of their own and it ends up failing after maybe two years or three years. Why do you think this is and how can they avoid that? I, I think it's about to believe what you want to, what you, who, it's, it's about passion. Because of course many young people would start farming, would start business, but if you're not passionate about that thing, of course you won't hold into it. So passion, is very important. If you're passionate about that, mm -hmm. it would actually sail through. But of course, we have some people who start with the mind of, I need to make money out of this. You, so if you stay even in the organization, so even some people start the same organization because they want to make money out of it. They want to, you know, donor fund. So when you wait for two years, three years, even, even a one year and there's nothing coming through, mm -hmm. of course, just leave it and go your way. So, Passion is very important in this. Passion is very important. Yeah. And uh, speaking of, you, you, you said that you decided, let me collect a few friends of mine so that we can start this. What motivated you to start it with friends other than starting it on your own? Uh, there's someone who says, if you want to go far, go alone. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go further, go with people. Mm -hmm. So that's what drove, drove me to, you know, working with people and working with friends. And of course, friends and more people give you more energy, more support. And I've personally experienced that because 
sometimes you go through, you actually use your own resources. I've used my own resources. So sometimes we find ourselves at a point that we really want to drop. But the friends say, no, let's move, let's move. Yeah, let's move on. So they have actually given me a lot of energy and morale in doing this. Mm -hmm. So I would actually uh, recommend that if anyone wants to start, it's always good when you get together and move as a team. Oh. It's always beautiful and gives you energy and more passion, of course. <laughs> so in addition to Gracia's mission, what other activities are you involved in? Yeah. Uh, currently, I was nominated to be part of a board of my governors of uh, Kigoche Vocational Training Center. And I think this was uh, uh, from the, my uh, activities and my work in the community. So I'm in charge of technology in that institution. I also serve as a, a value chain lead. Uh, I'm in charge of value chains, a graduate value chains lead in one of the organization. It's called Kisumu Young Agripreneurs. So this was an umbrella of young farmers in agribusiness and our agripreneurship in Kisumu County. Uh, and I'm also a farmer, I think I've also mentioned that. <laughs> and personally, I'm also a consultant. I support also a small organization in entrepreneurship, uh, business development. Uh, grant and proposal uh, development. Yeah, I'm also support uh, other young people in uh, life skills and in employability skills set. You have many hats. What is your secret? <laughs> Just passion, you know, passion and what what we do from the community because uh, most of these things that we do, we do them from the bottom of our heart and then we also do them uh, voluntarily. Mm -hmm. So once you do this in Florida, you get to learn a lot in the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if I, I have, I'm interested to get in touch with you and maybe partner with you as, a, as an organization, where can I find you? Uh, we have our office is in Umbei. There's a place called Umbei. It's along Ahero Miwani Road, uh, eight kilometers from Ahero Town. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and maybe my contact is 0711. 982590. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so you, this is a quite a positive initiative, you know, creating solutions where you feel there is a problem and advocating for different changes in society. What advice do you have to young people or a community who desire to see that change that they want to see, but they lack maybe the motivation to start or they don't know how to start or they lack the, inf the knowledge? Thank you. Um, I think uh, one of the energy that we get is that we are young. And sometimes when I see my age, I would want to be more younger so that I can do these things. I've interacted with people who are age and they tell me, I wish I did what you're doing when I was at your age. So we have a lot of power as young people and there's a lot of opportunities that are also coming our way as young people. And so it's, young, it's the young people who can transform our communities because people who are already aged would not th think about something new, would they not bring something new to the community. But it's the power of young people. So it's only the young people who can make that transformation. And let us think about the community. Let us think about other people. When you think about other people, of course, your ways will open up. But of course, we have a couple of other people who think about themselves. So it's always important to think about other people. And I think I love one of the advice from uh, one of the Chinese billionaires. It's called Jack Ma. He's the founder of Alibaba. Jack Ma says that uh, when they started Alibaba, they were thinking, how can we support other SMEs? You know, so through supporting other people, other SMEs, today Alibaba is a is 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 one of the biggest global companies Company. that we are. Yeah. So let us think about how can we lift other, com other, other people? How can we lift up other communities? Because we have the knowledge, we are flexible enough, we can do research, and this can adapt to the community's transformation. Wow. I love your call to action. It's very important that young people understand that Fending for yourself is important, but uh, service to the community is will guarantee much success. Yeah. Definitely. So you have had it. Huh? As a young person, you have a lot of power. 
you have the power to influence change you have the power to bring success to your community and to yourself do not neglect you know the power of collaboration take advantage of it take advantage of the knowledge that is you know you can get it anywhere the internet is present digital technology has improved greatly and you can use the information to start something of your of your own and guarantee it to success with the power of collaboration this has been youth in action i am nyangwesa grenis see you next time this is the way to do it this is the